Greetings and welcome to this gathering. We are the second Sunday of, uh, of Advent, so we'll celebrate that uh, shortly. But just to let you know that this time of worship will be also a time of meditation and a time where we reflect on uh, stillness in this winter stillness with the snow and versus the time of spiritual busyness. How do we get the right balance? And what does Jesus tell us about it? First, a time dedicated to the second Sunday of Advent. The hours of daylight are short. We are finding a way through the season. Amidst the darkness, we look for the coming of the light of the world. As a sign of the coming of Christ, we light our first two Advent candles. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Winter light can be dazzling. The sun low in the sky, blinding us with piercing rays, showing up the dust in our homes and the marks on our windows. On a vast expanse of snow, the sun's rays pick out crystals of ice with clarity and precision, perhaps even with ruthlessness. Sometimes we feel that the spotlight is on our lives, our souls, and in this searchlight which finds all our dusty, marred spaces, we may ask, who are we? What are we? We're not the first to ask that question. The writer to the Hebrews calls to mind a verse remembered from Psalm 8. But someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? or mortals, that you care for them. So, in the vast landscapes of the Scottish Highlands, or wherever we are today, we focus on that question, who and what are we? In the wideness and variety of creation, there is something remarkable, precious and unfathomable about being human with all the joy and pain, laughter and lament of our lives. May these long dark nights of winter give us space to reflect on our humanity and God's care, whilst the cool splendour of the moon speaks of cleansing, giving us courage to walk singing into the radiance of December sunshine. Who are we, God of this astounding universe? We are formed from the dust of the earth, and you have breathed life into us. We are jewels in the wonder of creation. We are children of the living God. We need you at the start of this week. As we stumble through these challenging days, we hear you whisper to us, I am coming. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come. come. Amen. Amen. Please join me to our, with our first hymn, Just As I Am. Hymn 556, 556, Just As I Am.
holy and higher power. You are present in all the aspects of our life and community. Nothing happens without your knowledge. Your love is our son. Gracious and merciful God, who call on us to love as you have shown us through your son. We look at our weak and see how we have failed to love you and our neighbors, either by negligence, self-importance or focus, or through our shortcomings. Lord, forgive us. We seek to challenge our ways, so give us the strength, the faith and the will to do so. The Lord forgives the children who come into the divine light, so we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our second hymn is Jesus Calls Us Over the Tumult, hymn 250, 250. Jesus Calls Us Over the Tumult. We're having a short reading today, which is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, from, verses, uh, from verse 35 to verse 39. And I read. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciple, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squirrel came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the wave, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. The rat race is an expression which is often used to describe our modern life. Not only it covers a professional life with all its deadlines, rushes, appraisals, targets and non-stop meetings, but also family life with the race to bring the children to their activities or grandchildren 
our own social life, commuting or shopping. Even in churches, we have our own self-declared holy rat race. Committees, councils, social events, reports, and even sometimes a liturgical calendar. I can't believe it is already Christmas. When asked how is life, the response is very often busy or one of its variants. And if we don't say busy, we almost feel there's something wrong with us. Surely everybody has to be busy, because busy means contributing to the society, the communities, having an exciting and varied life, and having a lot of demanding friends and family. Busy means to be socially successful. Surely those who are not busy should hide behind artificial busyness. There's plenty of opportunity to join a club, become a treasurer, joining a course or the gym, joining the cleaning rota of the church, volunteering up to the point that we are back as an admired members of our busy society. Obviously, there's nothing wrong per se with all these activities. What the rat race highlights is a frenzy, the rush, the overfulness, the burn down, which often double with happy to help, but I don't want to commit. So we protect, we feel we protect our perceived freedom by keeping the appearance to stay in control. Of course, new technology is not helping. Hello, I'm calling you because I've sent you an email five minutes ago and I wonder if you have received it. Does that ring anything to you? Do we achieve anything by running the rat race? Or are we running away from something? From ourselves? From God? Are we not praying that some, like, so someone, like in our reading, will tell us, peace, be still? Is not our life like a storm with our faith sleeping in it? Jesus said, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. We want to believe that this is a modern question, but in the 1730s, 1740s, uh, John Wesley was caught in what was called the stillness controversy. The Wesley brothers were leading a small Moravian congregation without a pastor in London. He urged them to adopt a strict discipline to build up their faith through prayer meetings, time of worship, Bible studies and other works of grace. A visiting Moravian pastor to London heard the members of the congregation complaining how more they practiced, more they felt their faith weakened. The Wesley brother prescribed more prayer and hymn singing. The Moravian pastor advocated stillness as part of their discipline. Both sides had massive arguments and had good theological uh, reasons, throwing at each other verses from the Bible. The controversy, the controversy, hard work or stillness, or maybe better, harder work, including stillness. You can understand the Wesley point of view. To be a good servant doing God's work, we need to practice a very busy and structured faith life with all the items described above. The God who gave his son, the Lord who died for us, the Holy Spirit who never despair in us will not expect less from us. On the other side, from the Moravian pastor, we are powerless. All is in the hand of God. Be still. There's an argument that instead of being busyful, we should be discerning and focusing where we are called. Stillness as discernment. We are stuck in this conflict of wanting to be good disciples and do everything right like in Colossians 3 or Ephesians 3. And on the other side, honouring the God who said to us, be still 
and knows that I am your God in Psalm 46. How do we manage this conflict? How do we avoid to be part of a spiritual uh, rat, race, rat race? But is there any really an opposition here? I believe not. There are many verses in the Bible calling for stillness, meditation, even contemplation to be with God and not kidding ourselves through our actions. So what is the right balance? We are all different, so the balance will be different from one person to another. But all start with stillness, meaning leaving it in God's hand, a little bit of humility, spiritual humility, and listening to God's calling. Not what we want to do, not what the church, the community or family want us to do. We can be actively still. It's not about laziness, but about intentional stillness. Check Isaiah 40, 31. So when we are still in our life, when are we still in our spiritual life? How do we learn? To be still in a society which demonizes such practice as being unproductive. Stillness is part of our Christian theology from the example in the Gospels, Matthew 11, or all teachers like Gregory Palamas, Julian Norwich, or Mr. Eckhart. Maybe it is time to be countercultural, like in Romans 12 too, and to rediscover the discipline of stillness and to practice it. Let us pray. Lord, we call on you to teach us the humility to know when to be still and listen. We are in the world when those who have the last word win. With you, with you, we won't have the last word. So we should pause and listen. May our faith be strengthened in your silent presence as in your teaching with words. Amen. Almighty Creator, we come to you in prayer. We come to pray for our world. We pray for peace in Ukraine and Russia. We pray for peace in the Holy Land. We pray for peace across the world, including Yemen, Syria, Sudan. And we pray for peace and reconciliation in North Korea, Myanmar, the east of China and Afghanistan. We pray for this country. We pray for all those in our communities who suffer in their body and their mind. We pray for those who mourn. We pray for those who suffer from addiction and their families and friends. We pray for those in recovery. We pray for all the children who suffer from poverty and also all the adults. We pray for all those who have lost hope, that they may find in Christ the new light. And we pray that the church become a beacon of that light, a beacon of love and comfort, a beacon of love and hope, a beacon of hope and peace. Lord, we pray for our families, our friends, and the friends to be, the strangers we meet. Lord, we pray for ourselves, and we bring to you our private prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon us.
Let us share together the Lord's Prayer. I will use the modern form, but feel free to use the form you feel the most comfortable. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us, wherever he may send us in the busyness of the world, in the silence of our meditation, in our joy and in our suffering. May God bless us. Amen. May you have a good week. God bless you all. Bye.